lovely people, my name is Emma and today I am bringing you my TBR for the first half of August. So this will not be covering my TBR for the History Challenge which is the um, History Readathon that I am co-hosting that is happening the last two weeks of August. I will be releasing a separate video for that but I have been reading quite a lot recently since kind of lockdown started happening and I don't see that changing anytime soon because whilst I am back at work my hours are quite reduced so I'm putting out a different TBR for the first two weeks of August um, which won't be including particularly any history books. The main focus of this one will be to continue or finish a lot of the series that I have on the go because I did a whole new bullet journal spread and I realised just how many series I have on the go that I really 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 need to finish them um, and some new ones that I really want to start. So August, the first few weeks of August is going to be mainly sci-fi and fantasy, a lot of finishing off series, just so as you're aware. Okay, let's talk high priority books first. Um, the first one I want to try and get to is Within the Sanctuary of Wings, a memoir by Lady Trent. This is book five, it's from Marie Brennan. It's book five in the Tr Lady Trent series. This I've described many times on my channel before of like alternative universe Victorian England with dragons, with a lady dragonologist and it's almost like if David Attenborough were a woman in Victorian era studying dragons. I really really enjoy them and this is the last book in the series so it's everything being tied together. There's been an overarching plot that I can't really talk about that will be building to a head and I'm very very excited to see what happens to all these characters. I've generally enjoyed all the books so far so I'm really excited about this. Another super high priority book that I cannot believe is taking me this long to get to is Sword and Pen by Rachel Kane. This is book five in her Great Library series. I believe it's the last book and it's going to be wrapping up the whole series. Now I can't actually fully remember exactly what happened in book four so I'm going to have to like go back and check my notes but basically this is set in a world where the Library of Alexandra didn't burn down but instead became a hub for kind of governmental power and it deals with censorship and control over the population by controlling the disseminate like um, the spread of information. I've really enjoyed the series. I think it's YA but I'm not too sure but I think it does a really excellent job of exploring all sorts of cool ideas about like the history of ideas and how ideas are formed and sort of um, invention and things like that. I, I generally just really enjoy it and I'm looking forward to finishing it. Another super high priority book or books is book two and book three of the Broken Earth trilogy. This is by N.K. Jemisin. We have book two here and book three here and so I'm just going to hold them whoop, like that for you. Uh, this is a fantasy series which is set in a world where kind of from a geological perspective the world is very very unstable and there's lots of like mini extinction events that they call seasons and because of this humanity is involved in such a way that a collection of people have these sort of powers that have the ability to sort of mediate and control some of of these events occurring but they become basically the a sort of oppressed class that are very much used by the ruling class book one was doing all sorts of cool crazy things you're following three different characters one of them is in a second person perspective and um, there's all sorts of conversations about motherhood in it generally i think it's such a cool interesting funky fantasy doing such like weird fun things with real real like low like foundational level world building that I found really cool so I'm super looking forward to book two and book three and I'm definitely just going to finish these. I may even get to book two technically before the end of July. Um, it arrived recently and I've been very good at not picking it up to try and get through some of the stuff I've got currently going on um, but it's calling to me and I really want to finish the series. Another series that I started recently that I'm going to be continuing with is uh, Rosewater. This is the Rosewater Insurrection book two. This is a sci-fi set in Nigeria where there's been like an alien dome that lands and once it arrives um, people who have psychic ability it starts to become more pronounced and there's all sorts of healing stuff going on. Um, Tade Thompson really plays around with a lot of kind of timeline stuff that he's doing and we were following one particular character in book one but I believe we have a departure from that um, into book two and it follows something slightly different. Um, this says that the alien dome city the city's alien dome is dying um so that's kind of putting gonna put a different spin on this and i'm quite intrigued with where the series is going to go because it had a lot of different threads that it was playing with at the end of book one that have a lot of different possibilities of where the story could be taken so another one i'd like to try and get to is battle mage by stephen aaron this is a funky cool fun sci um, fantasy series i read book 
one of his second trilogy, which is set in the same world, which is kind of unofficially book four, um, which that one was looking at sort of a cold war between two sort of um, sides of uh, society. And I believe it kept referencing this big war that happened. And I believe the first trilogy is looking at that war and has some of the sort of older characters, obviously, in their origins. I really enjoyed book one of the second trilogy or book four, whatever you want to call it. And I don't think I need to go all the way back to the beginning to read these to enjoy the next ones in that series. But I'd like to kind of do it properly. Um, and I really enjoyed the magic system in this world. There was all sorts of um, cool stuff with how it like matrices almost. So I'm really intrigued to pick this one up. It has been quite a while since I read um, book four. It's called Mageborn, I believe. It's been quite a while since I read that. So it'll be fun to jump back into the world and kind of pick up some things from the beginning. A few other series that I'm going to be continuing in ebook form is I have The Fate of Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. This is book two in the Lady Astronaut series. And it's kind of like a historical um, counterfactual history idea of like, what if the space race in America was being driven by the fact that an asteroid crashed into Earth and we need a viable means of leaving the planet because it looks like there is going to be an extinction event on the horizon based off of the ripple effects of this asteroid. Um, so I enjoyed book one. I'm keen to see where they go with book two because in book one they didn't actually leave the planet at any point. Um, this was on a TBR from a lot earlier on in the year and I didn't quite get round to it so I'm excited to try and prioritise it. In a similar fashion I also have Behemoth by Scott Westerfield which is book two of, I don't actually know what the overarching series is called, book one is Leviathan but this is like a reimagining of World War One. I want to say where the warring factions are divided between sort of a steampunk kind of idea that is very much Germany and Austria and then you have almost like what are called Darwinists which is um, taking Darwin's ideas of evolution and also sort of genetic splicing and splicing together creatures that function in a way that machines have previously functioned in our world. It's a YA book that is doing a lot of very classic YA tropes for the storyline and the characters but the well building of the Darwinists compared to the sort of steampunk idea I really enjoyed and thought had a lot of my in it so I'm very excited about book two and what they do with it. Another one which would be finishing off a series is I do have House of Many Ways which is by Diana Wynne Jones. This is book three and the final book in the kind of Howl's Moving Castle or Howl series. This is a YA maybe even middle grade book. Howl's Moving Castle is very big and popular. Um, book three follows a completely different character again like book two did but eventually Howl and Sophie will come back into play. I'm less keen on this one it's not a high priority but it would be finishing off a series which would be quite good because it does kind of get another thing ticked and sort of off my overarching big to-do list and big kind of reading list so I will probably pick this one up for something a bit lighter. A super high priority book that isn't part of a series is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I'm actually picking this up because I'm joining in with the brand new book club that is being launched by Chapter Kate. I will link her channel down below and it is the Goth Lit Book Club although the uh font on Twitter makes it look like it's the Goth Tit Book Club and I really like that, so does she, it's all good. Um, this is the first one that we're going to be reading together, I'm really excited about it, it's been doing very very well recently, it um, is, uh, it's a book set in 1950s Mexico and it sounds like it's um, a woman who goes to try and find out about her cousin who thinks that she's being poisoned, so which is riffing off of a lot of ideas of like my um, my Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, which I read a couple of months back. So I'm really intrigued by this. The idea of the Gothic Lit Club is we're going to be alternating kind of a new Gothic lit, like, lit book from a, an old classic Gothic lit book. And Daphne du Maurier is a big author from sort of the classics from that. Um, so I'm really intrigued by this and I think there's going to be some parallels. So it looks really exciting and fun. Continuing on with other series that I'm interested in trying to uh, finish off or continue with, um, I am going to be trying to get some graphic novels, specifically two, volume three and volume four. I read one and two oh, probably over a year ago now, so I might need to skim them again to remember what happened. But it is about a gentleman who, when he eats food, he can taste like he knows the entire process of what has happened to that food up to that point and the uh, the police use him he's like a detective and he tries to, to use his power to find out what happened to people um, and sort of murders and things like that there was some vague reference to vampires somewhere in book one or book two and I'm not 100% certain where the story is going or what the overarching plot is anymore but I will do a quick google refresh myself and then jump back into these I really enjoy the artwork I think it's really good fun um, it's very kind of sapia toned um, 
doing some really interesting cool things and yeah I generally I had a good time with the first few so I'm excited to jump back in with this and it's been a little while since I've read any graphic novels but the graphic novel non-fiction I read last month has or this month recently has a kind of reinvigorated my uh, interest in graphic novels again. Now we're getting to the bit where I'm like these aren't gonna happen but it's nice to be ambitious right? Like that's the whole point to TBRs isn't it? So my ambitious ones include Her Majesty's Dragon or sorry Temeraire, it's definitely called Her Majesty's Dragon, it's not called Temeraire, uh, book one in the Temeraire series. This is um, the Napoleon Wars meets Dragons, I don't know much more about it, Naomi Novik is a bit of a booktube darling, her one Uprooted in Spinning Silver are very popular. This is an older book from her but this is basically going to fulfil the sort of enjoying reading about dragons and series about dragons void that is going to be left once I finish Lady Trent so I do intend to move on to this one and I'm intrigued by the idea of introducing dragons into sort of such a, a classic of European history like the Napoleon Wars so I think it's gonna be good fun. I also might get round to The Winter Crown by Elizabeth Chadwick. This is a historical fiction that is book two in I don't know what the overarching series is called but it's basically following Eleanor of Aquitaine and this is a really interesting historical fiction where Eleanor of Aquitaine is like a person from history. Um, she was a British queen. Um, she uh, she was mother to Richard the Lionheart. She kind of plays a, a big part of um, sort of the Crusades and that kind of time period. And I really liked book one, which sort of followed her early life and her first marriage. And now book two will be looking at her second marriage, which I think is to it's one of the Henrys, maybe Henry fourth or Henry second. Not too sure which. Um, but I really liked uh, Elizabeth Chadwick's writing style. I think she does a very good job balancing like fact and fiction. Um, and I really liked the audiobook so I'm very inclined to pick this one up on audiobook. I may also get round to Witchmark by C.L. Polk I believe. This is like Edwardian um, Britain and, Ed and like an Edwardian historical fiction but with magic put in over the top. I don't know what the plot is but I know it's Edwardian plus magic so I'm intrigued, I'm excited, I'm really enjoying like historical fiction meets fantasy or sci-fi at the moment so I'm really excited to try and look into this one but like I said like these are less likely to happen because I really want to prioritise some of these series that need finishing so those are going to be sort of the, the top of the list and then you never know I might get to this one and if I don't that's fine. Um, I think that's all of them just kind of quickly scanning down the list have I covered everything Yes, I believe so. So that's a fairly ambitious TBR for the first half of August. Like I said, I will be putting out my uh, one for the second half of August for the History Challenge at some point soon. So do let me know, have you read any of these? What do you think to the series? Um, where do you think I should start? All of the opinions, etc, etc. Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!